guys, welcome back to our channel. I am back. I'm sure that you guys missed me just a little bit. Anyways, we've been asked a few questions about how we do our filming for our YouTube content. So we're going to run you through the different cameras that we have that we've been using to film stuff, some of the new ones that we've been trying out and show the different looks that we can get off the different cameras and why we would use all this different gear in what scenarios and stuff. Uh, but we're also going to show you a little bit of a sneak peek if you stick around to the end of the kind of content that we have to come because we're finding that a lot of people don't have studios or studios are becoming harder and harder to find. So we thought that you might benefit more from seeing how you can do stuff without having a studio. And also it kind of helps us when we're traveling if we have just like a small amount of gear so we can do stuff on the fly while we're on the move. So I've had some questions about what we do for recording our stuff. And we've back been on maternity leave for a couple of months. I've had to learn to do more myself, but I need to do more myself because Beck and I want to create more stuff and we're on our own normally. So I've been playing with lots and lots of different gear, way too much gear, and I'm slowly honing the gear that's working and the gear that's not working. So I'll start off on my computer. I'm running a program called ScreenFlow, and with ScreenFlow it'll record whatever monitors and whatever sound I ask it to. So at the moment, it's recording this monitor here now, and that's going to record anything that happens on this monitor. And my camera being tethered to whatever program I'm using, like at the moment this is Capture One, whatever picture I take will then come up here and you'll be able to see it come straight up from the camera. If I just work my way around sound-wise, I've got a little Zoom 2, which is a tiny little unit here. They're amazing, they're really small. They're recording to 32-bit float, so you don't have any input volume. It just records and it's, you can talk very loud, very soft, and you can fix it afterwards and it doesn't distort. So I really like the zooms, especially for 32-bit float. The next thing I have for, we use this a fair bit, and we'll be using these more. They're the Sennheiser AVX system. That what the difference is, is this records into here, whereas this will record back to tiny little receivers here, which are then plugged into a Zoom F3 field recorder, which records in 32-bit float, so we don't have to worry about volume. We won't get distortion from it. On these also, as you can see, you can't see my lapel is we have these little things, and this will stick to the inside of my shirt like this. It doesn't muffle a sound at all, and it just means they're hidden, and they're also a bit protection against anything like wind. If it's too windy, we'll still have to put a wind sock on. Next little gadget was this lovely little, and nobody is sponsoring this, nobody at all. This is stuff I like to use, and I'll tell you everyone's flaws as well. This I love. Um, this is a little 360 iPhone gimbal. So if I put up my hand here and hold it for four seconds, you'll see that light just turned on. It just told me that the iPhone's now recording and you'll see as I move, the iPhone's gonna follow me. And they're really good. They only drop out every now and then. Even when I walk to another room and come back, they seem to work fine. A camera that Beck normally has on a gimbal is a little um, A7C. So one of the problems is this camera we can't set to s tone and I want to record without, without all our other Sonys on that. But I found a little hack. I've put in some settings. If it works, I will put it in description below. But that's normally the camera that Becca's using and she normally has a little Vatus 18mm autofocus lens. Most of our cameras when we're doing stuff in the studio will have them on auto ISO because the sun comes up and down. They're only ever pointing in one direction so the background doesn't change much. Um, I have my little RX7 with this camera here. It normally sits pretty close to whatever camera I'm shooting on the tripod. And I've just got myself a little T bracket so I can mount it next to my lens if I'm walking out, if I'm doing stuff outside. I've, on top here, I've got a GoPro, which I haven't been super happy with. It seems to be too wide. And I found the last tutorial I did with uh, Tess, the camera on top of the Leica just seemed to be a little bit down on the model, especially on the closer things. So I'm trying a few different things on this now. Because we blew up one of our cameras while we were traveling in Europe, I had to get another one and I got the FX6. I've been hanging out to get it for a long time. I bent over and got it. And this will become our workhorse for all of our more 
uh, our podcasts, things like that. We won't be travelling with it because it's so big, but with this we can link in. We've got four different audio inputs we can put in. Um, running a, a Ninja V, we've got a Shinobi and an Atomos, and it's so people on the other side, when we're filming stuff, we can actually see our screens, it'll show our peakings and things like that, our overexposure warnings. And the final one we've got now is what Beck's on now, which is the A7S Mark III. Um, and that's just on a, we have two different gimbals that we use from uh, DJI. Um, I think this is the RS2 she's on, and we've got an older one which Beck prefers because it's lighter. We were trying some stuff with Raven Eye. It was a complete waste of time. So Raven Eye is you hook it all up, you put your phone next to it, you mark yourself on the phone wherever you move, the camera will turn. Within two minutes, it loses you every time. As soon as you walk a little bit quick, it just loses you. So uh, the Raven Eye system, I don't like at all. And then we've got this little thing I'm playing with. So far, it's been a disaster because the first time I used it, I had it on the lens facing one way. So it didn't film anything that side, but that's where we did everything. The second time I set it up, I didn't set up my color balance or anything like that. Um, all cameras have been set up the same with color balance. To set my color balance, I just pretty much go to the FX6. If I stick this in front of the lens and just hit auto white balance, it'll give me the white balance. I find it's really, really accurate. And all I do is punch that number into everything. But yeah, the, first time, the second time we use this, I forgot to do the white balance. It was horrible and orange, I didn't like it. So we're just gonna, at the end of this, I'm, you're gonna see every single angle of what we're filming and you'll be able to see what each camera's doing and the good and bad things about it. The one thing with the 360, if it works the way it's supposed to work, it means that we can just leave a camera there, record, and then afterwards we can pick any angle we like and we can have it just follow me around. So while I'm doing this, we can set this to follow me or at any time I can edit it and tell it to switch around and film back right now. So that's basically our camera gear set up. Beck and I are here today to do a little bit of a play because we've realized since, since COVID, a lot less studios are available. Even when we're looking for studios, when we're traveling, we're finding a lot of them aren't around anymore. We saw a lot of the fashion industry and advertising industry has changed. So a lot of studios have shut down. So we are going to put a little bit more of our work into either home setups or outside working on locations. And one of the biggest problems with that are days like today, which is overcast and it's a nightmare for lighting. So we're gonna move some of the studio lighting in a smaller, cheaper way to outside. So it doesn't matter what the cloud or sun situation is, we'll teach you how to light stuff so it still feels natural. So what Beck and I are about to do is just play around with a couple of LEDs and things that are small, just to see with this bad light in here if I can get a nice light on Beck. So this is a little bit of a teaser what's to come, but I need to get all my gear sorted out before I start doing the videos. And this is a little bit of me having a little bit of play. We eventually, I wanna have a system that's small enough that Beck and I can travel anywhere in the world with it and be able to at least get a reasonable light on a face without looking too fake and still have it been able to fix it, fit into our luggage when we're traveling. And nobody's sponsoring this. This is just gear I've got and playing with. All our, all our gear is in the description section. So this is a Paragos. There's also a thing called a Roto light. They're very similar. But I'm gonna first take a picture without any extra lights on. Um, it's mainly because even though this looks quite pretty, it's not a light I would be happy. And you blinked. Um, Beck's just come back from six months of doofing. Now we've got a dumb face. Let's try a pretty face. Cool, thank you. So yes, there's a, like this, I could fix a lot of this in Photoshop if I wanted to, but I don't want to fix it in Photoshop. And the main things that I'm looking for that I'm not happy with is I want to clean up this little bit of bagginess and the contrasty, the down light from above is making her a little bit pandery. Um, the black and white's actually making it look worse and I don't know why it's coming up in black and white. We'll just go with previous. What I'm gonna do is now I wanna introduce a light and try and keep it as natural as possible. So I've got my exposure for this room set up. Um, I'm gonna turn the power right down and 
I know before when we white balanced everything that we were sitting around about 5,400. It's most likely a bit higher now, but I'll still go 54 because that should match our ambient light. And if Beck stops heating herself, what I'm going to do is just, there's a catch light in there that straight away says this is fake light, but I'm just going to ignore that for a minute. So I can always take that out later on if I don't like it. I'm just going to slowly turn this light up until I feel it's fixing the areas that were giving me a problem. And I can feather it in and out on her. At the moment, I've just got the clear one. I could go for a smoked one. That's only about 20% power. Ooh. Yeah, if it wasn't for the catch light, which again, I said we could very, very easily remove in Photoshop that gives away, and there's a little bit of the shadow under the chin. Now, I could most likely, the shadow under the chin was bugging me a lot. I could most likely fix that by dropping the light a touch lower. I might see, I got an umbrella. By putting on an umbrella, it's gonna take a lot of power off. And I made up a dodgy stand to be able to do this. So by me having the umbrella as close as I can to the light will allow the most power, but still should spread the light a little bit. All right, so if I just now bring my power up, and all I'm doing is just using what I can see, that's definitely softened the shadow off. I do need a fair bit more power to run this. Hopefully I can shoot past this light. Oh, umbrella is in my shot. We can do this. This is why I love natural light. So can you look straight at the camera again? Just so I can, yeah, so bags, no bags. Oh, I can come around this way and still lose no bags. Maybe I need to touch more power. Just a touch, I got rid of the shadow under the chin too. Let's try that. I do have horrible umbrella in way, but if I was very clever, like I would in a studio. I would just move a little bit so umbrella wasn't in shot. And that's actually a nicer shot closer in. We only need, I think this shot I like not having the whole corset in. That's really cool. Cool. So if we come and have a look at our picture, that's actually cleaned it up a lot. Even though we can still see this catch light in here, that's, but see how we've diffused it off a bit. It's not feeling so obvious as a catch light. And this is the direction I'm going to take with some future videos. So this is just a little bit of teaser. I do not have the gear I want to do it yet. And I need to play with quite a few different bits of gear. I'm going to just do one more little bit of a play. So I've used a constant light set up here. I have a little B10 Pro Photo. And on this lovely little toy, which is very expensive, sorry, I didn't make this cost. Do you want to turn around and give the camera a look so I can? So I've got a modeling light on this and I've got a color temperature. The only thing with the color temperature, it doesn't tell me the temperature. So I'm just going to guess where my temperature would be. And I think it's about there. And I'm going to just slowly bring up the power. That, oh, I've got enough power here. So if I do this again without anything on this, right, I'm getting distinct shadows saying that this is a light. There's shadows off her hair. Uh, everything like that is distinctly telling me this is a light. I'm going to sneak the umbrella off this. I don't know if the Pro Photo modeling light is going to have enough power for me with this, but the other thing I can do is turn it down to a really, really low powered flash. The closer I get the umbrella to the light, uh, the more power I'll get through the umbrella. It's actually looking better. Oh, I think I like it about there. Let's see what we get with a photo. Well, it looks quite nice in a viewfinder. It's really pretty. Again, the catch light's the only giveaway and I think we're going to have some fun doing some stuff like this because I could actually turn that down a little bit more or bring it back a little bit. I'll bring it back just a little bit, which is going to turn the power down.
that's made a big difference. So just to remind you what this looks like if I have nothing on, you see there's a big difference in uh, that look between that picture and that picture. I could most likely even go halfway between. So let's even see. Everyone knows I can never stop with lighting. I always have to keep playing. All right, so that's way brighter than it was before. I'm gonna slide the umbrella out now, which is gonna diffuse the light even more and turn the power of the light down a bit. And I am cheating with my Leica today. I'm on autofocus. So that's about halfway between. And if it wasn't for the catch, like, yeah, she's a touch brighter in the face, but that has still fixed a lot of what that was doing. Let's see if I can fine tune that even more. Let's get some light not so direct onto Beck. And let's pull this off. Let's use the edge of this. That's where I touch more volume. The one thing I do like about this sort of lighting is because it's constant, I can look with my eyes and see. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, see, I can really get away with that. That's feeling so much more natural if it wasn't for the catch light. Now, I don't care about the catch light, to tell you the truth. I think that's making a really pretty picture. And again, if I, the catch light did bother me, if you think about it carefully, it wouldn't be hard to go into um, Photoshop and just heal that out and you're gonna get that beautiful glow there. So to quickly finish off, this is the program I use to do my editing, Final Cut Pro, and you'll see that there's all of my eight cameras plus sound. If I just move my playhead along, you'll see that there's all our different cameras all synced up perfectly together, and I can just click from camera to camera. So this here is the FX6. I've had to change exposure because stupid me set the zebring at the wrong level. Then the next one across is a Sony A7S III. Both of these two cameras were set to this S Cinetone. Then we come across to the A7C and it doesn't have Cinetone. I tried to use a hack that's supposed to mimic it, but there's quite a bit of difference. And it's not a camera I've been loving lately, so we might be dropping this out. Then we come on to the RX. Now, even though a, this won't get Cinetone either, it did sit quite nicely and it's normally just a close-up. So this is a camera that's normally mounted on my camera or next to my stills camera. The next one across is, this is the GoPro and you'll see that even though we had settings to try and keep um, exposure the same, the GoPro was darker and we couldn't seem to get it to work with any type of auto exposure to hold the same as the other cameras. The colouring's not too bad. I can most likely swap that across. The next one is the 360. So with this, is a, I've still got a little bit more playing to do with this to understand the colouring. Like we've dialed in the colour temperature and it's quite a bit different to what it looks like on the others. I think it's something I'll use, especially if I'm just on my own, like Beck's not filming, if Beck's either modelling or Beck's not around and I'm filming someone else. Then we come on to, this is the iPhone, and it's amazing how well the, the iPhone on the 360 gimbal works. I've been very happy with that. And also, we're shooting, this is on our Cinetone, and this is just straight out of the iPhone, and I'm fine just working them across without having to worry about too much about color balancing. And then on to the final, which is the screen flow. And this is what's recording everything I do. Um, one of the, the good things about this program, very quickly, I can just jump from camera to camera pretty much by wherever I am. If I'm here now and want to make a, a cut into here, I just press it and there's my cut made. Then I can move my cut around going from camera to camera. It just makes it very quick and easy for me. So we've got a bit more work to do play-wise to get us a system that's nice and lightweight. And especially when I'm filming back and I don't have someone else filming. But what I'm trying to get it down to is if I'm working on my own, 
is having three or four cameras that are light and easy to work on my own that can pick up everything. I'll put a link to the one we, I did with Shay on the streets and we had a couple of little problems. I didn't quite always pick up everything. And that was just using a, a camera mounted on my camera and the iPhone on the gimbal. So we hope you guys enjoyed that. No, I wasn't actually on maternity leave. And if you did enjoy that, we will throw up some other videos that you might be interested on the screen now. Show us your ring. <laughs>